going to drill into a little bit about the psychedelics, because I think this is something that's very interesting for people, whereas in, I think you said the 80s, a lot of these um, serotonin reuptake inhibitors became very popular, but psychedelics were classified as Schedule One drugs, and research was ground to a halt. And even now, some of the psychedelics that people are talking about with microdosing and different experiences are limited by that still. Isn't that true? A lot of the ketamine experiments, uh, how much is that because ketamine is a better drug than the others that are so still Ketamine is legal and the other it's ones are It's legal. Is period. that the only Good. reason? Can you say a little I, more about that? I would that? think so. I, I wonder what Gita thinks about it, but I think that's... that's Hi, Gita. Yeah, I think I saw yeah. her in the front row. Hi, sweetie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, I've, what I've told Rick Doblin is that he, his is the original PTSD therapy. He started in 1985. Uh, that was before Prozac. That and was before what, the was he SSRIs. Yeah. Um, he had the idea of using MDMA-assisted psychotherapy for PTSD. And that's not legal? It wasn't, but he was doing clinical trials. So is it, it was, legal now? No. But it will be soon. We hope that it will be federally approved. But um, many people can get these um, treatments through research protocols. Uh, so in our and there's center... there's a big underground world, of course. So this is... This well, is that's, <laughs> you know, that's True. another thing completely. It's a reality, though, that it's there, you know. I, I know people say to me all the time, it doesn't matter what your research shows because people will be doing it because we have access to these drugs. Like, the, problem, you know. the problem, though, is that we don't have an evidence base because what happens not in the underground it. stays in the underground. And so you certainly anecdotally have a lot of reports of people saying, this saved my life. When we hear reports of people saying, you know, this was a disaster for me, we tend to suppress those voices. Oh, absolutely. We don't want to hear it. Yeah. Now, in research, we can systematically ask the question. Now, absolutely. we're having pretty good outcomes, I have to say, better than I thought. And you're studying specifically MDMA, not ketamine. We're studying MDMA, and we're also studying um, psilocybin. And, you know, I was a little nervous about that. I thought psilocybin was this very disembodied experience. How are people who have extreme trauma going to do? And so far, they've done pretty, really well. Um, and so there is something about being in an altered state in the right kind of environment that, that seems to be helpful. But the problem, the problem of relying only on anecdotal evidence from the underground oh, is that absolutely. you just won't know. So, so uh, ketamine, I mean, do you believe that ketamine is specifically better than the others? Why was it deregulated sooner? No, no, it wasn't deregulated. Ketamine is an anesthetic agent. It was never illegal. And so people accidentally discovered that it had certain psychedelic properties if given in low doses. But the hero of the story is indeed Vic Doblin, who collected $64 million to do the largest study, of which I was part of the mm -hmm. study. Uh, and the feds didn't produce a penny, and he just raised a lot, a lot of money mm -hmm. to produce the evidence. And the evidence had to be created, absolutely. And yeah. do you think that these will be open to other people as real therapies. I think one of the real frustrations reading about this, which was interesting yeah. to me, is sort of some failures of talk therapy on their own, many failures of some of these prescribed drugs, but no access to somatic therapies yeah. that involve what yeah. everyone, like uh, two experts on stage tonight are saying, are the most beneficial that we have on our yeah. horizon. And when do you think that will change? I, I, uh, not until we have a revolution and we have universal health care. As long as we have, you know, as long as your insurance companies dictate what you can practice, um, the field will be dead, basically, because there's only stuff for which people have raised $64 billion that could produce the evidence. And like Peter Levine, who does wonderful work with the body, he doesn't have a shred of evidence. You know, a lot of very good treatments don't have very much evidence because there's no money to study it, and the insurance companies won't reimburse you for it. So, uh, Do you think that social pressure, that pressure from consumers, from people, can affect Social change? pressure as in complete, completely retooling re our medical system, yes. Uh, well, big, big, big it, it's not quite that simple. 
Uh, in order to be a psychedelic <laughs> <Disassemble>. therapist, <laughs> Russell, honestly, you know, <laughs> you have to learn how to do something that we don't do now in mental health which has followed the process of patients. This isn't what they teach in graduate school, and it isn't what they teach in medical school. Yeah. And we need to really start at the level of, we have to get people in medical school and in graduate school understanding that there's a different way of practicing. Um, you know, the revolution isn't just money. This is about changing hearts of culture. mind. This is yep. about culture and education. Yep. And then what we have to do is insist that these treatments be reimbursable and affordable, which, it, which is something that I'm worried about a little bit. Yep. Yep. But how could we work this out so that it's more like a procedure? You know, people spend seven, eight hours on an operating table. Insurance reimburses hundreds, tens and tens of thousands of dollars for what happened that day involving many, many, many people um, working together to do something because they think that that's an important part of someone's wellness. The real issue is that we don't take mental health seriously. Right. But and we have to take it as evidence. seriously as we take cancer or any right. of the other things but, but that people go to But producing the evidence is terribly for. important. Uh, if I were an insurance company, I wouldn't want to fund stuff either for which there is no evidence. Uh, so uh, collecting the evidence is also very important. Uh, so that's why we're doing the yeah. research. Yeah. We're involved yeah. in that, yeah. I'm involved yeah. in that. Yeah. And it's not easy research to do. Yeah. But we will not be able to get um, insurance companies to even consider this without research. So for all you people that want to have psychedelic-assisted psychotherapy, try to find a research protocol so that you could be part of the reason that other people get to have this reimbursed in the future. <laughs>